That's what uh, real podcasters do. Red leather, yellow leather, red so leather. Say, uh, like blue pleather, fake pleather, because we're not real podcasters. <laughs> oh, dip. Yeah, it's to get your mouth moving. You know, I when I record my YouTube videos, I realize since I don't talk to anyone ever, mm-hmm. it takes me a long time to record vocals because I, I I stumble on my words. <laughs> I figured if you did a lot of public speaking and you were doing PowerPoint presentations, you're always speaking. But now, since I'm mostly alone all week editing, I'm so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. I mean, I spend I spend all day long on the phone at work and. Talking in front of the camera oh, okay. by yourself, you're like, and I like butter. Wait, wait, this is a video about lenses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what happens is your brain is, you're too conscious of like how you look. Uh, we're just a mess as humans. Did you see what wait, I got? What? I saw that and I'm like, I thought we didn't need the X-T3. I know, that's what someone said in the comment. But I wanted to test it. I wanted to test it for YouTube videos and the... Um, the the BNH partnership just came up at the right time. Are we going back to our very first video, Omar? What's our very first video? Our five mistakes that photographers make <laughs> and buy all the photography. Yes. I didn't buy it, though. Oh. All what? right. Then I take everything no, back. No, no, no. So let me explain. No, um, right, no, I think I know what you did. Okay, yes. Let me explain. So for those mm. of you uh, new to the podcast or new, oh, we should probably welcome everyone. Hello, everybody. My name is Mo Morales. Uh, this is... Omar Gonzalez. Hi there. We are friends. We delve into the world of photography, sometimes into entertainment, comic books, and anything else that fancies us that day. So, welcome. Thank you. And uh, great feedback on the last podcast, especially the one that was like, you went too long, man. Yeah, that was like eight, eight <laughs> hours, bro. <laughs> Yo, that was good, but shut up. <laughs> I love you, but I don't love you. <laughs> I don't love you for 47 minutes. That's a... Even I was shocked that it was that long. So yeah, I um, think we had a good flow last time. This one's gonna be terrible, then. <laughs> it. We're done. All right. Goodbye. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Why am I hot and sweaty? Hold on, I'm gonna take off this thing because I won't. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to edit how your hat disappears. No, no. We're like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mo. Let's get rid of your hat. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right. So just to explain, uh, I have a small YouTube channel. We just passed. Uh, 30,000 subscribers. Yay. And BNH works with channels uh, as affiliates. And also they, they, they have a loaner program. Uh, and uh, my channel is way too small for the loaner program. Mm-hmm. But they, I met with the people in BNH and they were super nice and they really kind of felt a good vibe and they decided to take a chance on a tiny channel. Oh, that's nice. So kind of like minor league, mm-hmm. sort of getting in early. And their loaner program, they, they said, what would you like to test or try out? And I said the Fuji X-T3 and a 10 to 24 millimeter lens. So for 30 days, you get to keep, you know. Um, now, when you when you do that, do you are you obligated or you have to put some kind of review, whether positive or negative about the product or no, you just talk about it and you're good. Yeah. Yeah. There's they, there's no contract. It's all like old business, you know, mm-hmm. handshake kind of I help them out. They help me out. And so the goal is to because we've been at the superstore, you know, it's, it's a great store. They have great customer service. So I wouldn't do it partnership with, you know, like what's a, like, you know, those New York uh, electronic stores that have everything in the windows. No, uh, no clue. Oh, I know you're talking about like those little tic tac places that have printers, cameras, yeah, and yeah. Uh, old Walkman. <laughs> They're dying. That's a dying breed. But in the old days, Amazon's killing that. Yeah, Amazon's let's not killing get, let's not open up that thing. Yeah, yeah, kill the worms, mm. kill the worms. I love going to B and H though. Yeah, but tell me about that. So far, uh, the Fuji X-T3, exactly like the Fuji X-T2, handling wise, I haven't uh, like a race car, haven't you know, put it in super speed mode and tried it out a little bit because I just got it. But what do you think of the silver? Um, I like it in a lot of cameras. My honest opinion, I don't like it on this one. I don't like it either. I I, uh, I got it to sort of mix it up because every camera I have is black, so I could just pinpoint which one the X-T3 is without are looking you, at the Are you familiar label. with the, the Nikon D4? No. No, not the D. Is it the D4? The D4. Um, is that it, pro pro one of the it, it's a throwback full frame oh. looks like that it has all the dials and stuff like that oh, yeah. it didn't do that well but it was loved by the niche group that grabbed it 
Cool. I'm thinking, is it D40? You mind if I check? Well, confirm, well, or you'll confirm for me. Well, we'll figure it out. Omar later will put the put right one here. here if it's not D4. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was a, a throwback like this, like no an way. old rangefinder throwback. And um, Don Giannotti bought it, and no he way. loved it. He really loved it. Um, but this I never was before this took off the Fuji. Stand? It was before the 850. It wow. was before the eight. It was around the right after the 810, probably the Nikon D810. Um, before the D5. It's not the D. It's not the. It's not the yeah, D4. We'll figure out what it is. We're gonna talk TVs. What about TVs? I love TVs. <laughs> All right. So today is Super Bowl Sunday. So Super Bowl Sunday. Now, those of you international folk out there, uh, the Super Bowl is the major sporting event in the U.S. And those of you that call soccer football, I don't know why. <laughs> Just kidding. Soccer football. That actually makes sense. Perfect sense. Not like our football. No, our we football. Throw the ball. More yeah, it should be it, throw so. run ball. <laughs> Let's check out the one. Yeah, yeah. But it's a huge event here. But even bigger than the game is sort of like the social aspect around the it. ability to what get is, together. For those of that don't know, what is Super Bowl? Super Bowl is the ability to get together with your friends, watch wonderful commercials, eat all the food. Wait, go back to the commercials because commercials. Most people just just watch the commercials. Like tonight, because I am not a fan of the Patriots, nor am I a fan of the Rams. Uh, boy, I'm going to be watching all the commercials. And yeah, I'm like fast forwarding to the commercials. <laughs> Yeah, and but, those of you that don't follow the sport, this year is a little controversial. The teams that got in got in uh, questionably, questionably with some bad calls, and it's just so th- this has like a dirty little feel. But for the most part, Super Bowl is a positive food, pizza, wings, with your nachos, friends, friends, like, friends n- drinking. Nine out of ten times, the women come, the men come, and they sit next to each other talking. And occasionally watch the game. Exactly. You know? That's the funny thing is anyone who's a true football fan would not have a Super Bowl party. No, because they don't want to see people have them screaming at the TV <laughs> or crying at the TV. And be like, I love that commercial. <laughs> Shut up. We're losing. <laughs> we're down by four. Oh, my God. And it's also super gambling day, too. Oh, I, mean, I didn't be- know that. Between all well, the bets. I knew it was gambling. Prop but bets, gambling bets, those Super oh, Bowl yeah. boxes. There there are things that are that people bet on silly things, like the coin toss, for one. Coin toss. Who's like you win? lose right away. You're and, like... and then they're gonna be- there's also a, a prop bet of whether their punter is going to throw a pass or not. You know, those are every kind Whoa, of thing. Whoa, what are the odds on that? Damn. Everyone has there's odds for everything. They You want to bet it, they'll give it to you, you know? Yeah. And again, those of you that are not... Uh, from here, the other thing that happens in most offices in the U.S. is they have something called a, a pool. Right. They get uh, one hundred by. They get ten by ten boxes. So you have ten rows it's a across grid on paper and ten rows down, and then everything is is a box. And whatever number you pick of the box, they draw numbers later on, and then they assign those numbers across and down. Yeah, so everyone fills in their names first so that you don't get a, a good, you know, because there's good picks. Right. And then the numbers get put in second. After all the boxes are filled. Then you watch the game with your little paper. And see if your your numbers match the, the score at the end of each quarter, at the end of each half, and, and at the end of the game You period. can win big, yes. depending on the pool. My, you ever win? My, not that my office did it, but if they did... <laughs> Because it's totally not kosher. If my office did do it, there is a possibility that someone could walk home with three thousand wow. dollars. So, if if they did it, yeah, but they don't do it. They don't do that. We're a legitimate cosme, <laughs> cosme <laughs> company. That's what goes on today. But that brings you back to having a wonderful TV to watch the game on. Yeah. So a lot of companies have sales for TVs. Uh, man, shopping for a TV has completely changed. You can order a TV on Amazon or B A B and H or any retailer, and it comes to your house like in two days. That's how I got my Best Buy uh, right? TCL. Yeah, Best Buy is doing it too. Fifty-five inch. In uh, the old days, you had to like strip the box in the parking lot because the damn TV wouldn't fit in your back seat. Exactly. Oh, remember those heavy tube box TVs? Uh, oh boy. I mean, I remember watching, uh, it's not, not to be like, hey, in the old days. <laughs> but like the last j- junky TV that I thought was good was my 32-inch tube mother, which had a great CRT picture. Yeah, you're like, this is awesome. Damn, I, and the last thing I remember seeing on it as a movie was like Lord of the Rings and the letterbox. Oh, like, you know. <laughs> so you had like four inches of screen. Four inches of screen. <laughs> it's like wow this movie's really wide yeah look at yeah, all that black space my goodness i can't see a thing but watching dvd and being like dvds man they're so high quality man wow remember how what we didn't have was awesome 
exactly. That's basically what you just said. Yeah. Our like, nothing was so special to us. I remember my first color television. Yeah, I'm that old. So uh, growing up, I had nothing really? but black and white. Damn, bro. My brother, when he got out of high school, so I was already what, a junior, sophomore, and in high school. That's when we got our first color television in the house, you know. What, did you grow up in the 60s, yo? I grew up in the project, son, and I was broke. <laughs> we were broke. I hear they're selling a color TV on layaway. <laughs> Finger hut, son. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, we always were kind of like electronic people. But the CRT the, um, was the last like kind of good, quote, good TV when the new generation of HD TVs came in, I'm talking 720 stuff, right, man. Right, When it was like, you can see their skin. Yeah, yeah. And clearly. It was, <laughs> exactly. And there was no HD content. But the first TV I got was a, a rear projection Sony mm. TV, LCD, so that had a lamp. And it was like, with the fan going on. And they took, was that one of those that took up like eight blocks? Yeah, the black, <laughs> the back of it was so fat. It was like, baby got back, yo. It was like having your own theater in the house. It was so huge. It was big. It was 50 inches, but most of it was bezel. <laughs> like the whole bottom the portion. The bezel was like eight inches. Yeah, like a- rear projection. I remember when I finally got one of those, I thought it was cool. But that was already when the flat, the, the flatter televisions were coming out. The, it moved fast, remember? Yeah. Uh, so actually... My my CRT Square 32 TV was a bubble screen, but for a millisecond there were flat ones. There were flat ones, right? And and that they was were a to, little bigger. Like there, people started to be like, "Oh, we can, we can make the screen." And that's a when they bigger. went from they went to a 480 20 uh, 480p viewing, and that was awesome. 480 yeah. Progressive changed everything on on television. That's why even now you're still using a progressive scan. But we won't go into that because that's really nerdy. Yeah, super nerdy. I, I want to get more back to the shopping aspect of it and. So that was a big thing. That was like PC Richards in New Jersey. We waited for delivery, like if it was a freaking washing machine. Yeah, I, the guys call came your in. Boss, you're like, I won't be in on Tuesday because <laughs> there's a come television coming. One to six p.m. <laughs> Great we'll delivery. We'll be there window. on Tuesday. Period. Just good luck. <laughs> I love UPS. It's like your your shipment is on the way. Your shipment is on the truck, and then it's just like delivered. <laughs> There's no like, hey, it's closed. It's worse than Amazon. That's like, you'll get it by 9 p.m. Yeah, anytime by 8 p.m. So back to TVs. Sorry. Ooh. So did you ever have a rear projection LCD? Yes, I had a, I had a Panasonic. Yeah. So those uh, were pretty good. The light bulb went out on our my mother-in-law's TV. But for the most part, that lasted a long time until the flat ones started to come out. Now, they're, they're really thin now, but... The original flat ones weren't... HD, super flat in front. Are we talking about the the tube TVs or the? No, no, flat uh, uh, LEDs. L- like when LCDs. it was the plasma yeah. LED. Oh, what do plasma. I go for? Yeah. yeah. And do you remember the negative of plasma? Yeah, that they would burn out and die eventually. That and burn in. Do you well, know about burn in? Burn in. Yeah. Yes. Burn Not it. burn out. You know, that's you. That's me. <laughs> burn out on this TV. But I remember the first. When I, okay, when I worked in, Bur- in Best Buy and they brought in Burger the Bur- King. Yes, I worked at Burger King too. I like the B stores. So when I worked in, in Best Buy, a large uh, Wapo with cheese. No, what is it called? A large uh, electronic type store. Oh yeah, for those of you that don't, Best Buy is is yes, it's uh, it's actually one of the last surviving electronic stores that you can go and see electronics. So when I worked in Best Buy and they brought in the very first uh, plasma TVs and they brought us into a room to have us you know demo oh. it so we could then explain it to the customers. That's right, the the little theater they used to have. And I was like. They put on uh, Saving Private Ryan, and and this is back before we realized that um, certain refresh rates created a fake movie look. Oh, soap opera effect, right? Yeah. But the first time you see that, you think it's pretty cool. That's true. You're yeah. like, this looks real. So when I watched Saving Private Ryan with the refresh rate on the plasma being higher than I used to, I was so like, oh my god, I could touch them. Yeah. It was so awesome. Also, not, not uh, touch you. Sorry. <laughs> Also, Spielberg uh, recorded the beginning of that with like a slower frame rate, like so it would be kind of like choppy, and so I'm sure all of that together looked very weird. It was very impressive, but it was, it was easy for me to explain. How Avatar, to buy that. like a Avatar. James Cameron was was on uh, Best in Best Buy with mm-hmm. the high another, refresh another name rate. You can't say <laughs> James Cameron. Yeah. You what did I say? Cameron? Cameron. <laughs> Cameron. Well, let's go shrimp get some shrimps. <laughs> but anyway, so Avatar. No, I remember seeing Avatar with the crazy soap opera effect in the store, and I was like, Ooh! So I went LED. And the reason we're talking about TVs is because I just got a TV. And I've always, I've always, like, sacrificed getting a lesser TV. You know, there's, there's a bang for your buck. 
you could get a great TV for like 500 bucks, right. you know. Uh, but I've always wanted either a plasma for its black levels or an OLED. And the bad thing about those TVs is they they do have a risk of burn-in. But from all my research, it's really like... With time, it's become less of a problem. Yeah. Because the way they move picture uh, pixels exactly. around. Exactly. They have a pixel shift thing. But the other thing is, depending on your habits, if you're a gamer or you watch a news network all day, do not get an OLED. Do not get an OLED. Because over time, the picture, like certain aspects on the picture that are you know static, like a logo... Or if you watch sports, the scores. So if this TV's in a bar for years, it's going to burn in, like right. 100%. And what burn-in causes is, uh, even on your phones that are OLED, um, when you change the channel or you're moving between um, program uh, apps in your phone, what happens is for that split second that it's moving and you have you a black a screen or something white, completely white, dark, white, whatever, you'll see the things that normally were on the other channel, like like yeah. the residues of a, a banner, yeah, the a logo, logo, the CNN logo, they say yeah. it's a big problem. So things with red. For your yeah. phones and your OLED screen, you'll see your your Android buttons of left, right, stop, all that wow. stuff. Those burn in there too. But they say with phones, like burn in is less of an issue because we turn our phones off. You know, your phone's going in your pocket, it's off. It comes on, it's off. You know, so it's always moving in pixels. But a television that has a logo up there burning in, and hours and hours, but I got an OLED. I got. I decided to get like the bet, and you saw it, bro. Mm. <laughs> That's exactly. I've That's always- that for men out there, or or women with tech drive. It, it the the minute I saw it, I was like, "This is amazing." And here I am trying to sell him, and I'm like, and I hate it. I hate him because this is so beautiful. You know what I'm talking about? You're happy for your buddy, but you're so like envious that you just got to keep it cool yeah, <laughs> yeah and and i'm and i feel i felt guilty getting it because it definitely is overkill it was uh top of the line it's um it's a little big for the space that was just gonna say that it, the, it, it, the biggest overkill is not it's not top of the line it's not how much you pay for it. it's not how amazing it is it's too big it's where you put it yeah yeah and uh <laughs> so you put it in a closet right <laughs> And the closet is like five it's by nook, six. It's a nook, okay? It's a nook. And the TV's eight by three. So yeah, yeah, it was definitely my fault. But the thing is, I fell in love with OLED, and it's the smallest OLED they made. It's the best OLED that LEG makes for the price. And so it all, like, perfect storm, they were on sale, and I just got it impulsively. So, uh, but the picture is, like... Beyond delicious. Uh, incredible. Beyond delicious. Like... We saw, we were watching a video, and I said, I would like to take a picture of that, Chris, let alone <laughs> a video of that, Chris. That was some... Oh, was yeah, so. but with that said, um, you can get great TVs. The TLC Roku TV, that is a bang for your buck TV, I the paid, 6 Series. I paid 500 bucks, 565 bucks for it, normally six 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 ninety nine. dollars It's a 55-inch... Um, 4K. 4K HDR compatible. Damn, bro. And... The only thing is, the blacks, yeah, are gray. not as black, yeah, yeah, as if you're looking at an OLED. But if you're not looking at any other TV, you're, sure. you're very excited. Yeah, yeah. So that's the problem with TVs and and, and how the stores Shopping. structure them. They'll place similar TVs next to each other, and when you get home, you feel like it doesn't look as good or yeah. that's not. But then you have to you have to remember, when I worked in Best Buy, our biggest marketing ploy was where to place the TV. What TVs to place it next to, and how to set up our lighting. Yeah, remember the lighting in the store is set up in a certain way in that area. There's no so reflection, so that you have a beautiful view of that television. When you get back home and you have the sun beaming from the te- <laughs> from the window behind you, right on your screen. <laughs> What's going on? What is that rectangle? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's something. You know, some TVs <laughs> have amazing views, but they don't have enough power to overpower the sun, so it, it ruins the viewing experience. Ah, I forgot. I'm glad you brought that up. And, and uh, that's the other negative of OLED is, but it, it's a little overstated that it's not good for bright viewing rooms because it doesn't get as bright. It goes only to like 800 nits. Uh, I don't even know what a nit is, but 800 nits. But uh, like L- LCD screens can go like 2,000 nits. Like if you're in a super right. bright room, but you also have the washout effect. The bright yeah, window, yeah, so. yeah. But yeah, this the television he has is, is delicious, is amazing, and uh, that's the whole thing. Again, he, he did you saw it next to other OLEDs? Or what yeah, if by far I saw it uh, next to lower models of it, and it it was definitely the best TV. It had the crispest blacks, color sharpness. It was killer, 
And uh, they do keep all the OLEDs together and put the LEDs somewhere else so that you can't look at those side by side. Because um, LEDs are better. So, so you got the LCDs. Those are okay. They're very good. Then you have the LEDs. Well, I think LCDs. Oh, no. L- LED, an LED is an LCD. It's a modified L- LCD. All right. Go ahead. Explain. I don't know. So it's, it's I don't have the exacts here, but there's a big difference between an LCD and an LED. Okay. Um, the way that the crystals and the liquids are dispersed within those crystals to prevent the picture. Cool. We'll put the definition up here. <laughs> <laughs> but so you have LCD, LED, and then you have now the current with the OLEDs. And the OLEDs just kill everything. Have you heard the next thing that's coming out? No, tell me, Papa. Oh, well, well <laughs> Samsung is working on, see, they want, in on this like perfect black levels market so what they're trying to do is make tiny micro pixels they're called Mm. so it is an led but it's sort of like each pixel can turn itself off like the organic oled and so uh right now they've made one for the ces show 2019 they made one and it's like a huge it's like an 80 inch whatever but it's got beautiful blacks but it's not ready yet for the market but that's the next thing to come is where there's no uh, danger of burning and the like the little pixels can turn themselves off that and the picture's so like incredible too. yeah so oled may disappear so know? that's the whole thing like you know lg uh, with their oleds they can't make a great phone with their oleds their phone oled screens are are good they're, they're almost great but they can't touch samsung when it comes to a display in the oled world but you go into the TV side, mm-hmm. and I, I per, this is opinion now. Obviously, you you might differ your opinion, but if I look at a Samsung and an, and an, an LG OLED TV side by side, I'm always going LG. Yeah, one hundred percent of the time. I have not seen one Samsung side by side to a, a, a LG that I preferred yet. Now, mind you, maybe I'm not shopping. I'm not shopping high enough. Yeah, yeah. But at my price point, which is still out of my price point, <laughs> <laughs> that's my, most people. Yeah, yeah. but so, but definitely. If you haven't seen an OLED TV, go down to a, a television store and just just look you at it. You shouldn't because you're going to freaking buy it. That's, That's like the, the commercial. Problem. Like, you don't put bacon on things because once you put bacon on things, <laughs> you ruin them for life. I was going to say, just to, to sort of talk a little bit more about what goes into buying a TV, is you need to see it. You need, need to go, not only is it the picture quality, but it's the inputs. Uh, because what the beautiful thing that Samsung's doing, which I hope is the future are these boxes that are completely separate from the screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what's happening is they um, have, I think it's Samsung or is it LG? No, it's Samsung is doing it. They'll just have the screen and then there's one little tiny wire that comes out. like a Right, that plugs into an uh, an input box. And the input box is boosted, first of all. Yeah. So the signal it receives is automatically boosted before it goes to the television. And it accepts... HDR, HD, I'm sorry, HDMI, uh, HDMI, HDMI 2. What a pain when you have your TV on a wall and you got to uh, add another connection or or maybe change the coax cable or, you know, to get behind the TV is a pain if you don't have a good bracket. So that box is great to just add peripherals to it. The only thing is that fiber optic cable is the only lifeline. What are you talking about, the one for audio? No, the, the, there's a screen, right? And there's like a tiny, it oh, looks like fishing cable. wire. Okay. The actual fishing wire. It's like tiny. It's supposed to be like an invisible wire. That's proprietarily theirs. Mm. So if that bends or breaks, they even say on the box, don't bend it. Don't be stupid. <laughs> don't be fishing with this thing. Yeah. So, uh, But that's a cool direction. That's one direction I like they're going. And then the other is uh, user interface. How is the Roku TV's? Very simple. Uh, right. It was similar to what you had downstairs because yeah. I saw it had Roku on it. Yo, it's that we had a Roku hooked up. Oh, okay. So then never mind. So it's basically similar to your Roku set of where um, I can go to the home screen and I can watch, um, you know, it has the apps that I can watch. It has, you know, main TV, YouTube, whatever I want to. It has all the settings on the side. I could update the firmware. Cool, cool. It's, it's so it, like a Roku. Yeah, it's, it's very, very nifty. Have you I seen the it. LG wand? So LG has yeah. like a little, uh, yeah. yeah. So that that in user interface is great. LG has like a little, um, like the Wii remote. And it, it's but, it's super. But you can't go bowling with it. I mean, <laughs> you can't. You can't go bowling. All right. I think we're good for this one. TV, uh, shopping for TVs, uh, Super Bowl, buddy. Uh, so what are you going to do for Super Bowl? Um, nothing. A bag of nothing. I'm going to watch. I was going to invite my brother over, but then I decided, you know, 
he's tired. He doesn't want to go home at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to drive home at 10 o'clock yeah. at night. Um, yeah, we do. And I don't feel like cleaning up or cooking. Yeah, and, yeah. So just We're going to do some snacks, nachos yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I bought like a like a delicious hamburger, a cheeseburger pizza that I'm gonna throw in the oven, and, and then you know it's got pickles <laughs> on it. Classy. Like, I'm like, you need to do more. Uh, if you go to uh, Mo's Instagram, will they see it on your Mo Morales photography? Yes. Well, no, it's not on my Mo Morales photography. Uh, as we mentioned before, I'm a man of many Instagrams. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so, you got your the other one back. Oh, that was so weird, man. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> so I have a food channel because I'm in, I love to cook. I have a channel for my. I have a page for my dog a page for my photography a page for me <laughs> got like a, and, a, and and our page which we need some help come come over to our page uh but so i, I yeah so i filmed uh my, my breakfast uh being made yesterday and uh i got more positive feedback than i expected i just did it for myself you know what else? It, it's uh it was the lighting mm-hmm. it's the lighting because most of your cooking stuff you do at night mm-hmm. and you can't control the lighting you don't have a huge softbox over your no you know, no. if you're a cooking channel, you would have a beautiful softbox over your. I might have to invest in one because I want I, I want that portion to grow. I like cooking enough that not for YouTube but for Instagram. Just I want more. Well then, yeah, yeah and I think the better the image quality or the video quality, you're right. It's going to make a big difference. You need that, like how we saw in the OLED, those greens and reds, the uh, Dennis Prescott white balance kind of thing going on when you cook. That's what I was aiming for yesterday. Yeah, but with with kitchen lighting, it's like browns and like muddy colors of things. I could, I would love to light a food show, like just beautiful white balance with the green freaking tomato. You know what I probably do? I'll probably order a uh, peppers. newer peppers, not tomatoes. A newer long LED um, softbox. <laughs> mm. You know, one of those LEDs with a softbox with a over. continuous light. That's yes. a good idea. Put it right, right by of, my stove. Yeah. You know, you could get a boom arm, so you can maybe get a little one, so it's not too. It's gonna get all kinds of grease on it, isn't it? But if it's overhead. Then you could just move it around. You could roll it over everything. It'll just be straight over. I have to get a second boom arm. I use. I put my camera on a boom arm yesterday. Well, I was gonna say, how about the light and the either phone or camera both on the same one, and mm-hmm. you could roll it around the kitchen. So it would be something that you roll, and then when you're chopping, it records and lights. Then you roll it over. No, that's a good idea because that's, that was my problem yesterday because the boom arm has such a big footprint. Yeah. That was a pain in the ass. That is. I mean, that was a pain in took us. So right, so right. That's allowed by our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsor zero. And we don't mean zero water. We just mean zero. All right, we're going to say goodbye because, man, that that guy's got to be bored already, the 47-minute uh, guy. Geez, did we go that long? <laughs> no. that? All right, we'll see you guys next time. That was a fun one. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Enjoy your TV. Tell us your TV stories down there. What TV do you have? Do you have an HDV or do you, an HD TV? Do you still have an old-fashioned television? Yeah, and tell us your, like, shopping for, is it... I, I, I kind of lost uh, the, the the romantic shopping for a TV. It used to be great bringing it home. Uh, how do you shop for your TV? Does it come to your house? The do same you way? check it out at the store and then buy it on Amazon? Let us know. All right. High five up top. Yeah. And screenshot it. Baby.